Hi, I'm Carlos Skill, host of Social Media Day Jacksonville, social media strategist and award-winning Snapchat storyteller. I'm speaking about why storytelling is the new content marketing and why every brand should be more like DJ Khaled and less like a brand. Please welcome our host today, Carlos Skill. Snapchat and Instagram. So where I'm going with all this 
is, once again, social media evolution is inevitable. As a business, you know, we have a lot of small businesses in the room, we have a lot of marketers in the room, we have a lot of social media marketers, and we have people that just use social media. You always have to be willing to pivot. You have to keep up with these trends, because as you've seen with AOL and MySpace, it's very similar to what we've seen with the evolution of traditional media and print advertising. And if you're not gonna evolve with the trends, you're not gonna evolve with the platforms, then what happens to your business presence is it will eventually die off on those platforms along with the platform. So I put all this into context because what you're gonna learn here today at Social Media Day Jackson is how to leverage platforms like Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, how to actually apply these in a manner that's scalable. Now, I'd like to put this into context around social media evolution because today, social media audiences are fragmented. And I want to do a very quick poll. By a show of hands, how many of you woke up this morning to see what your favorite all-time brand posts on Facebook? Look around. Not a single person raised their hand. And I love asking this question, guys, because it puts into really into motion that while we as business operators and marketers view the value of social media, guess what? As consumers, we're not even using it to engage in consumer brand content. So if we're not waking up every day excited about what brands are posting on social media, then how can we expect our customers to be excited about what we're posting? And when I say that social media audiences are fragmented, it's because consumers and you all as users are not loyal to one particular platform. Because let's face it, you're using social media to engage with your homies. You're using it to go on and see what your friends are posting, you're going on there to post content. And brand content today has become very much the equivalent of an infomercial. So what I'm going to share with all of you here in just a few minutes is around some of these top trending platforms, how you can still grow and scale and convert. Now, Facebook recently published last week their latest update in terms of active users. Facebook is the largest social network on Earth. In fact, there are over 7 billion people on the planet and over two billion of those people are Facebook users. Facebook is absolutely the life, and everyone else is David. So where I'm going with this is that as businesses, as brands, you absolutely have to be on Facebook. You can't ignore Facebook's power. However, when you also look at the breakdown, you see YouTube, you see Instagram, which is owned by Facebook, you see Twitter, you see Snapchat. Then you see these messaging apps, which is WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger. You see WeChat. This goes to show how fragmented audiences are because there's no clear cut on social media. There's no clear cut in terms of how to be on a particular platform versus others. This is a real challenge that brands face. For those of you that run social media for a brand, for those of you yourselves that have a social media presence, think about it. Do you wake up every day and just think, well, today I'm just going to focus on Facebook? You have to go ahead and be on each other. You have to have a presence on multiple social networks. However, this is your audience on Facebook. This is the reality. Okay, because once again, I ask the question, and no one raised their hand. So while we see the value, while we invest lots of money to go ahead and get in front of consumers and we post content, the reality is that most people are falling asleep the oil on Facebook. Because Facebook content very much feels like a commercial nowadays, does it not? Think about it. You go on there, you see sponsored posts, you see brands posting all this, you know, all these cool videos. It feels very much like a commercial or an ad. And what's happened with Facebook is us as consumers, we learn how to flip the channel, so to speak. In the same way that we learn how to flip the channel on TV, we learn how to keep scrolling, how to keep swiping through. And the reason why this is occurring is because, let's face it, the majority of the audiences today that dominate social networks are millennials. These are your 18 to 35 year olds. And the reality, and speaking as an older millennial myself, millennials don't want to be sold to. In fact, most people don't want to be sold to. When you really think about this, okay, no one goes on social media purposely looking for a sponsor post. All of you, for the most part, agree that you don't wake up in the morning looking for brand content. So the challenge now becomes how do I get someone's attention? If naturally they're not even <coughs> interested or paying attention to the content that we're posting, which leads us to this battle between Snapchat and Instagram. This is the reality. I put this slide up 
at different talks that I do all over the world from executives. For the scare factor, the shock and awe of seeing this is today's consumer. And if you can't find a way to get on the radar, if you can't find a way to engage them, guess what, guys? You're missing the mark. Now, let's talk about Snapchat for a moment. I've been on Snapchat since 2013, and I've become a really big proponent and fan of Snapchat. In fact, most recently, I won an award for Best Fat Snapchat Storyteller. And I joined Snapchat in 2013 when I was working at Windows and Times. I was looking at creative ways to engage younger audiences, specifically millennials. And I became in love with Snapchat as a platform because I saw Snapchat as really being a no BS, brand free social network. And what I mean by that is, up until recently, when Snapchat rolled out its advertising platform, as a consumer, you could have a presence on Snapchat, you can engage with your friends, consume friends' content. And you would never have to opt in to a single brand, and I should like that. Because as a marketer, I don't always want to consume marketing content. I want to be able to go on social media and engage with my friends without having to see what brands are posting. Now, I get asked this question by brand marketers all the time. Where is the value, Carlos, in Snapchat? And let me go ahead and break it down for you. First of all, you have 150 million active users on this platform, and it continues to grow. The majority of these users, yes, they are millennials. A big portion of the audience on Snapchat is your 18 to 34 year olds. So to put it in perspective, if you're a small business owner sitting here in Jacksonville, and your business has these products or services that cater or appeal to this demographic, you absolutely have to be on there. The flip side to it, if you're B2B, so I get asked this question also is, well, you know, we're IBM, for example, or right, we're at BMC, and we sell to executives, we sell to the C-suite. Is there any value with Snapchat? Well, think about what Snapchat offers to your business. It's an opportunity to get direct access to those millennials, the direct reports, the report into the safety. It's also a way for you to go ahead and use this as a tool to create content to engage a younger audience to earn their trust today because the name of the game is not to go ahead and use social media for instant ROI purposes. If you're using social media for an instant win, meaning you're instantly going to drive all this business, guess what, it's not going to happen. This is a, a long-term play. So where I professionally see trends of value in Snapchat is this right here. On any given day, Snapchat reaches 41% on millennials throughout the United States. Second is content, the way content is created and consumed. I like it in Snapchat to is YouTube meets Twitter. And what I mean by that is the majority of content consumed on Snapchat is in the form of video. So that's where your YouTube analogy comes in. The Twitter analogy comes in is because content is short. It's as short as one second or as long as 10 seconds. So think of your short video content in the manner of 140 character tweet. Now, because content disappears in a rolling 24 hour period, now for the first time there's a social network that actually creates a sense of urgency for your followers that actually have to go consume your content. And trust me, I hear these objections all the time from marketers and marketing execs to say, well, Carlos, why are we going to invest money, resources, time, and oftentimes agency resources to go ahead and create all this content that is going to disappear? And I often say to them, think of the last time that you went and saw what your favorite brand posted a week ago, or three days ago, or even a day ago. Because let's face it, social media operates in real time. So when you're going in your news feed, what you see in front of you, it's in real time. And that's what people go on social media to see. They're not going on social media to see what brands posted a month or a week or even a year ago. So I often say to marketers, take yourself out of the mindset of being a marketer for a moment and do your job like a consumer. Put yourself in the consumer's shoes and think of how as a consumer, you're using these tools and these channels yourself. And if content in your new seed, you're gonna engage with it. You're gonna consume it, you're gonna see it. If it's not, it's out of sight, out of mind. So once again, with Snapchat, the content you create is short and it disappears in a rolling 24-hour period. So as a, as a brand or as a business or as an agency, what that means to you is putting emphasis on keeping your audience engaged so they keep coming back throughout the day. Now, Snapchat, the reality is that it's very much replacing the TV. When I think about myself as a consumer, once again, I don't have 30 minutes to sit down and watch ESPN Sports Center. However, with the summer on Snapchat, I can watch Sports Center through Snapchat in three minutes as opposed to 30. 
And this, once again, is why they feel they are for millennials. Because so let's face it, millennials are on the go. They live by their iPhones. So they're not the demographic that realistically sitting down watching TV commercials. Once again, they're flipping the channel. So it's important to know because, once again, you have this battle that's happening right now, right? Instagram versus Snapchat. So Snapchat is not positioning itself to be a player like a Facebook where they want you to consume loads and loads of peer-to-peer -peer content. In fact, what Snapchat's doing is building relationships with big media publishers, because the media industry is hurting, and they're seeing the opportunity to still get reach and get views through Snapchat. So the other objective, or objection, sorry, that I often hear from marketers is, well, Carlos, everything you say sounds great, but Snapchat is just for kids. And no, it's actually not. Over 77% 70, of Snapchat's database and users are above the age of 18. Think of Snapchat today in the year 2017, realistically, where Facebook was back in 2006 or 2007. For those of you that are young enough to remember back then, to join Facebook, you need to have an email address from a university or from a college. So Facebook, where did it start off as? As a social network for college students, essentially and works it evolve to today. My mom and dad are on Facebook, they're grandparents. It's where the grandparents and the parents are going to keep tabs with their grandkids and their children, realistically. Now, Snapchat is, in fact, a legit marketing channel. I'm going to share with you guys a brief case study here. Are you guys familiar with Gatorade? Right? Yeah? Invented <laughs> in uh, Gainesville, just on the street from here. So Gatorade, for the Super Bowl, ran a sponsored lens which is a form of advertising on Snapchat. And for those of you that are not on Snapchat, what Sponsor Lens is, is it's brand new creative that you can interact with throughout your snaps. And in the case of Gatorade, what they did was they rolled out this Sponsor Lens on Super Bowl Sunday. It was available throughout the US. And as a Snapchat user, you could go ahead and dunk a Gatorade bucket over your head, which is pretty cool. Now, the outcome for this was the average Snapchat user engaged with Gatorade's brands and their content for 30 seconds, which is typically the average length of a Super Bowl TV spot. And instead of Gatorade spending $5 million for a TV spot during the Super Bowl, they spent 500,000. And what happened was 165 million people saw Gatorade's brand new on Snapchat, which is more than the number of people who saw the Super Bowl itself. However, I want to put this in perspective, because I see a lot of heads nodding, it seems there's a lot of excitement out there in Jacksonville for Snapchat. Snapchat is not, I repeat, Snapchat is not another social network to sell. And this is the reason why. Because this is the audience that you're speaking to. It's very important as a marketer that you put it in context, who's your audience? That's social media 101. Who am I speaking to? Who am I trying to reach? If you know this is the audience that you're trying to reach and get their attention, guess what you as a brand have to do? You have to speak to them at their level. You have to use rainbow vomit lenses and puppy dog filters. That's the reality. Now, there's some three distinct challenges for brands that they're facing here in 2017 in social media. And I want to go ahead and address each one of those individually. And the first is what platforms should I be on? Have any of you asked yourself in the last 30 days what platforms you should be on for your business? or for your clients. I see a lot of guys nodding. And let's face it, there's a lot of overlap in what these platforms do nowadays. Whether it's Facebook, Snapchat, or Instagram, there's a lot of overlap. And let me be the first to tell you, your loyalty, if you will, is not to these social networks, it's to your customers. It's to your community, it's to your fans. So I often say, the name of the game here is not to be loyal to Snapchat or Instagram, it's to use these as tools to best position yourself to strengthen the relationships with your customers and with your community. So besides deciphering what platforms to be on, the next objective that brands face is how do I continue to grow? And I'm going to share with you guys a couple of different tactics. First is cross promotion on social media. So chances are by now, in year 2017, you've built up a Facebook page, you have a presence on Instagram, you have a presence on Twitter, you're trying to get started on Snapchat. How you grow on Snapchat? Well, you have to cross promote. And some really good examples out there that I want to share with you is Warby Parker. They're the uh, optical home delivery brand that sells eyeglasses. Warby Parker has one of the best social media presences of any brand from my perspective. 
And there's a couple of reasons why. One, they're fun to follow. And that's a key word that's often lost in marketing. Forget social media per se. Marketing in general, the word fun is often lost because as brand representatives, as employees of companies, we're often under this intense amount of scrutiny to go ahead and produce. So the fun aspect is true. You look at Warby Parker, they put fun back into their social media market. But what they're really doing is they're cross-promoting social media channels. So what they often will do is they'll create this really cool, fun story on Snapchat, and then they'll go promote it on Twitter, and they'll tell the community, like you see here, you know, hey, go on our Snapchat today, because we're showing you how one of our interns organizes their desk. You see Wendy's, how also they're leveraging Twitter to promote their Snapchat. So where I'm going with this is that you have to absolutely cross-promote, whether it's promoting your Snapchat content, Instagram content. If it's a live video, you guys are doing on Facebook Live, go over on Twitter. Go over on Instagram, go over on Snapchat. Let your communities know. Because your community is not just a person that follows you everywhere. It's multiple people that are following your brand across multiple channels. The second is social media influencers. You're going to hear from Sean Yala today. Sean's going to tell you about the amazing work that he does on Snapchat and working with different brands. But social media influencers, about 10 years ago, used to be called bloggers. So when blogger marketing was really hot, Brands would go out and they'd work with these bloggers to help tap into their email lists and help create content for them. Today, that's become influencer marketing. So if you're a hospitality brand, for example, I encourage you to run a good old-fashioned Google search and find out who are the top hospitality bloggers in your space. If you are you know, a transportation company, find out who are the people that are blogging, tweeting, creating content around automobiles. Engage these people ASAP. They don't have to be a Snapchat influencer per se. But what you really want to do is you want to find people who have reach, people who have a, a community already built, and you want to tap into that community. But there's also a very unique skill set that oftentimes a blogger or an influencer brings to brands. And that's creative storytelling. You see that happen in the examples like I have here with Sean Yala, the ability to draw, the ability to keep people <laughs> engaged with this short, creative, funny, witty story. The next is I can place a business. So location-based advertising is something that I don't see enough. If you have these brick and mortar locations, so if you're a restaurant here in Jacksonville, for example, you should absolutely be pimping out your social media presence all over your menus, all over your location. You should have your Snapchat code right when people sit down, have it at a table, have it on a tent card, have it on your menu. You should be doing this so subtly as people are going into your place of business, they're now compelled to go ahead and add in social media. So the same way that you try to get people's email information to stay in touch with them is the same way you want them to follow you on social media so they stay up to date with your brand. You see an example here with Champ Sports. The next objective that brands are facing now is what content do I create? So it seems like we've gone to this point in time where every good idea has already come to fruition in the past. And I often like to say that it's all about storytelling. Storytelling is the new content marketing. Storytelling is where it's at. Because at the end of the day, brands need to find a way to humanize themselves and to tell engaging stories about their goods, products, and services. Once again, as marketers and as business operators, we are all also consumers. So when you think of what compels you to go on social media, it's oftentimes to see what your friend is posting in his or her life. That's a story that's ongoing. But there's three key elements to the stories that you create and the content that you put out there. And that's what I have here on the screen. First of all, I mentioned the word fun before. If you're not having fun, then guess what? Your audience isn't going to have fun either. And chances are they're going to click away and they're going to unfollow you. The next is creative. You have to incorporate some ingenuity and creativity. Social media, I've been saying this since since I worked at Win Dixie, social media is not advertising. Social media is not print. It's social media. And the key word is social. You have to socialize, you have to have fun. And the third aspect is educational. Why do people go on platforms like YouTube to learn things? Why do people go on Facebook to ask for recommendations from their friends or their peers? It's to learn things. So I've had these conversations with marketers that work at financial services companies. They work at healthcare companies like Blue Cross. And they say, well, how can we use social media storytelling instead of marketing our business? Well, it's very simple. You teach people about what you do. 
You engage your employees, which from my perspective, employees are a company's greatest asset, regardless of the company. You engage your employees to tell the story on, on your behalf. <laughs> but always be thinking about how can we teach people to get the most out of what we do. Some examples here of some fun, creative, engaging brands. First of all, Disney. So when Walt Disney World launched their Snapchat account, they engaged a well-known Snapchat influencer by the name of Mike Flacco. And what Mike did is he actually started his story at his home before he ever even went to Orlando to go to Disney World. So the story technically started in Mike's house, where Mike was leveraging his followers, he's incorporating his ingenuity as an artist, and then as you see, the story started progressing. So he said, add at Walt Disney World on Snapchat. Once again, one of the advantages as a brand working with influencers is that these influencers have reach. And I know Sean's gonna talk about that during his talk today. And then as you see here, the story continued at Disney World, where he says, Disney asked me to come to Orlando. Another brand that gets creative storytelling really well is Taco Bell. Taco Bell is one of my favorite brands to follow because a couple reasons. One, they know their audience. They know that the audience that they're speaking to on a platform like Snapchat is a very much young millennial. They also use the built-in features that Snapchat offers, such as the ability to draw and use emojis and paint. Then you have brands like NASA that take their audience behind the scenes. How many of you would love to go and go behind the scenes of NASA and actually see, yeah, a lot of hands going up? Or think about going behind the scenes of your favorite brand. Do you have any Starbucks fans in here? I personally love Starbucks. I know I'll never be a barista in my life, but I would love to see what a barista does. Like, honestly, if I, for my phone, could go ahead and see how they make frappuccinos and various coffees, like that's actually content that I would want to see because it feels to me. I'll give you guys another example. I'm a big Nike fan, a big basketball fan. Next time Nike unveils its latest Durant or LeBron's, I don't just want to see a static image of a tweet or a Facebook post with a pair of sneakers. I actually want to see LeBron James unboxing his shoes, putting him on his feet, and going ahead and taking jump shots. Because once again, these social media tools nowadays give you the opportunity to story tell in a manner that previously, if you wanted to create this sort of content, you'd have to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars to create. Now, you can do it with an iPhone. Now, you can also do it with spectacles. I see my man here in front of him, Marty Ruiz, has spectacles. So, I can bring mine. If you guys want to know how these work, make sure that you hit up Marty at some point today. What these are, these are sunglasses that you can snap with. Which is pretty fascinating. And they're not expensive, they're like $150. You can buy them on Snapchat's website now. So these are Snapchat sunglasses in which you can create content by hitting a button. And let's think about this. If you're a small business here in Jacksonville, you can wear these sunglasses and you can actually show people, like, we're here at our place of business today, we're making a pizza. Or if you're a real estate agent, you can do home tours wearing these Snapchat sunglasses. So, I often like to say, look at these platforms, not as platforms, your social networks, look at them as tools. And what's really cool is when you look at tools like Spectacles with, with Snapchat, sorry, now you have the power of your hand to create content that previously, like I said, you would have to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars to create. So we've talked about growing, we've talked about creating content, now let's talk about keeping your community engaged. Because that's probably the biggest challenge of all. You can spend money, you can hire an agency to, to grow your audience and create content all day long. But your content sucks, no one's gonna watch. So let's talk about some examples here. First of all, it's using the built-in tools. Once again, if you're speaking to a younger audience, you have to speak at their level, you have to speak their language. You have to create content that's original. One of the biggest mistakes that I see brands today doing, you guys wanna know what it is? They're creating content on Snapchat, they're saving that content, and then they're going to Instagram, they're uploading it on the stories. Or they're taking their pre-roll videos that are not sized specifically for Instagram, which is a square, and they're uploading YouTube pre-roll videos on Instagram. And guess what? It looks cheesy. It looks like you didn't really take the time to use these social networks in the manner that they're intended to be used. So a couple of advice, a couple of tips is, first of all, Download size specifications for every one of these social networks, or use a platform like Adobe Spark, where you can create mobile content size for each social network. Use platforms like Canva, so you can create visual assets 
size for each one of these social networks. And tailor your content based on the size specifications of how these social networks work. I'll give you guys another example. So I have a YouTube video series uh, called Real Talk, where I interview over at NASDAQ's Entrepreneurial Center in San Francisco. I, I do interviews, I also provide social media advice. Typically, my YouTube videos are about 10 minutes long in length. Instagram gives you one minute. So instead of taking like one random minute that cuts off, what I have my editor do is actually polish up the video and create a one minute version. So I'm gonna get intro and an outro. That way someone watching my content on Instagram isn't feeling like they're just getting a leftover from somewhere else. Because the reality is that repurposing your content in the year 2017 is the digital equivalent of feeding your neighbor's leftovers from a company potluck the day before. It really is. So when you look at social networks like Instagram, and you look at Facebook, stories, and you look at Snapchat, stories, yes, they all do the same thing, but you're not speaking to the same audience, and they also have different features. So my challenge to all of you is create original content. If you're gonna go all in on these social networks, you have to go all in. Don't half fast it. Does anyone know who this is? DJ Khaled, yes. Glad I'm in Florida. So you'd be surprised. You go to South America, no one knows who this is. And it was kind of awkward and embarrassing. DJ Khaled, there's a reason why I have DJ Khaled in every one of my presentations. DJ Khaled is one of the most polarizing figures on social media today. For those of you that aren't familiar with DJ Khaled and who he is, he's a Miami-based rapper, artist, and producer. DJ Khaled is also one of the most viewed people on social media today. He has over 3 million views per staff. And you guys want to know how he does it? By posting content like this. <laughs> Doesn't seem very appealing, does it? But DJ Khaled, go with me here for a second. DJ Khaled has figured out the one thing, the one thing that most Fortune 500 companies today have not been able to figure out when it comes to marketing. Do you guys want to know what that is? Anyone want to say yes? He's real. DJ Khaled is real. There's a reason why I put this up. Because there's a certain element of transparency and authenticity that's often lost in marketing. It's lost in social media. So my challenge to all of you is to be much more like DJ Khaled and be less like a brand. You guys answered the question before. No one wakes up in the morning to go see what brands are posting on Facebook, correct? So don't be a brand on Facebook. Don't be a brand anywhere. Be human. Every single company has a story to tell. Every single one of them. When I started a company, I had a story to tell. Every company I worked for has a story to tell. But we're often not telling stories about our company and our people. We're often posting about products. And guess what? If people want to go ahead and learn about products, they'll go to Amazon.com and they'll learn about products. If they want to learn about the value that your company offers, then you should compel them and give them a story and a reason to show them things like your employer brand, why your place is a fun place to work at, why your company is a fun place to work at. Spotlight your employees. Spotlight the value that your products actually offer. Do you have a sale? You know, Sephora is a really good, fun brand to watch and follow on social media. Because what they do is they mix up their products. They'll have a perfume on sale and they'll go ahead and get an influencer to talk about it. Things like that is what you should be looking to do today which is leverage your community, leverage your employees, leverage those out there, and the tools, most importantly, to tell fun, creative stories. And the key for us is to have fun. I said this before and I'll repeat it again. If you're not having fun on social media as a marketer, as a marketer, if you hate your job and you don't believe what your company does, then you're not gonna have fun when you're marketing on social media and your community is gonna go ahead and feel that. So as I look to go ahead and wrap this up, there's going to be this big battle that continues to ensue between these two very powerful social networks. And guess what? Neither one of them are going away. Snapchat is a publicly traded company. They just rolled out a new set of advertising features. Instagram, which is back and owned by Facebook, is going head on with Snapchat. So these are the two most powerful social networks that you should be investing your time on. I see Amy back there. She's going to see it. She's going to say it's you too. But these are the two most powerful social networks you should be investing your time on to engage, especially millennials, 
out there today. As you think about having fun, as you think about everything I've said here today, keep your audience in mind. What you see behind me is a picture of a lot of raging, screaming fans at concerts. These are social media users. These are people that they might not be engaged in following your brand today, but if you put more of a human transparent element into marketing, what you should do is really force and challenge yourselves to turn this audience here into the audience that every single day wakes up and they look forward to seeing what your company is posting. And more importantly, you turn followers into true fans. Thank you so much for your time, everyone.